That's uh, the undertones. You know, I wasn't being funny. I, d- I do love that song. Yeah. And I love playing tribute to him. I was thinking, in the spirit of John Peel, maybe we should have put a brand new track by an artist who we don't even like, we can't bear, we can't stand. Right, just to prove... Two minutes yeah. of, you know, cacophony. Yeah. But that was lovely. And, and, you know, he will be missed, genuinely, I'm sure, by everyone who's ever enjoyed radio in this country. I hope so, certainly. We have been joined by the wonderful Sharon Osborne. Sharon, it's so lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm Thank genuinely you. a huge fan of you and your husband and your kids. Thank you. I'm one of, I, I really like Kelly. I know you've been having a hard time. Simon Cowell every week. <laughs> every, chance he, every chance he gets to have a dig at Kelly. That's the one thing, and that's why I came out after him, but we've sort of called a truce now. Good. I would because, hope so. yeah, it's like, you know, it, it's funny at first. Funny, OK. But three years still picking on a kid. Yeah. She was 16 when he first started picking on Stop her. That. It's like, enough. Yeah, All exactly. Right, well, he's, he was doing it to kind of like... Rile me. You're like an oyster, still in the shell, and he's got his little knife, and he can get... He thinks he can dig it in with the Kelly. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Having a little go. But, it's, uh, but, it's, you, but you've called a sort of a truce now. Well, yeah, I came out and said something about him just to nail him yeah, several because times. he doesn't have kids he doesn't have a wife i can't pick on anyone but yeah. him you so you were saying that his sexuality was in question yeah and i don't know i mean i was just you know you wouldn't I say, care anyway would you I wouldn't really care no, no. but it's none of my business anyway and i think everybody's gay anyway so it's no deal to me i'm with you on that one <laughs> um has because ozzy and simon they had a night together didn't they i thought no. they had a, didn't they have a bit of a fling yeah. You are such... Oh, I fell for that one. Can you imagine Super. Simon Cowell waking up in bed with Ozzy Osbourne? Can you imagine the look on both their faces? Oh, my God. I'd love to hear what Ozzy had to say. <laughs> Shut on! Uh, that's the worst impersonation of Ozzy Osbourne you will ever hear in your life, by the way. Uh, so the X Factor's going great for you. I, I, I read in the papers, I don't know if it's true, they've commissioned a second series. I don't know. Yeah, um, I don't know. Would you do a second series if they approached you? Um... I honestly don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to get through this one. I mean, first week, I'm the one who loses a contestant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't even know how long I'll be in. I mean, I could lose someone tonight and then... Because you've you got know, two more people off. in there, haven't you? Yes, okay. I do. So who do you have left in there? Because you have the younger group, don't you? Yeah, okay. I've got Tabby. Mm-hmm. Who's Tabby is the young rocker. rock and roll guy who my, my daughter rather likes. She's 13. I think she likes Tabby. So you've chosen well there. You've chosen someone who the young yeah. girls like. And Cassie. She's 17. Cassie. Now, I'm trying to remember which one she is. She sang Alfie last week. Oh, OK. And she was the one that they styled her to make her look quite old. They've kind of made them look a bit older than that they were, I thought. No, she had little short trousers on and just a little shirt and tie. No. Oh, didn't she have the ringlets and stuff? No, that's the one who went out. Oh, right. I'm getting confused. OK. Here's the one I like. Is Rowetta still in? Love Rowetta. Speak like that, Lucy. <laughs> she said, right, Sharon, yeah. I'm going to sing a bloody good song tonight. It's a Simon Cowell. I love him. <laughs> she sounds like uh, when Bo Selector does um, Scary Stuff. Yes. Spot. You yes. mean Bunk Tight? I can't say what she says, but. Uh... She is so funny. What a She's character. She's hysterical. Yeah, yeah. she is. Uh, how much time do you get to spend with the contestants? Because obviously you've worked with, especially your group, but presumably you do get to like them you do get to, to you have enough time to get to know them yeah all the time i mean we spend all the time they're always over at the house i mean last night we were with them all night took them out to dinner and they, they're with us all the time that's really nice and presumably you're keeping touch with some of them at least afterwards i would have thought oh, oh even though roberta got knocked out last week she's still i'm not going to let her go i'm still going to try and help her with her career so you're going to try and manage her yeah that's really good of you. Yeah. Um, is it tougher now, do you think, because you've been managing for years now? I know you've managed Ozzy for years. Before him, you managed various other people, didn't you? Yeah. Um, didn't you manage Lindsay DePaul for a little while? Yes, I did. <laughs> and um... No, honestly. Remember that song? <laughs> I remember No, honestly. I remember <laughs> Rock Bottom. Where were we? <laughs> Rock Bottom. Pick it up and start again. I remember all of them. Yes. Agony. Oh, God. <laughs> Which is presumably is what it was like. Won't somebody dance with me? Do you remember that one? Yeah, I do. They, they were kind of, it was weird kind of, but quite sweet pop for the period, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, she was very vampy, very good looking. Yeah. And she still is. She's, you know, I know she's had a bit of work done, but she's looked after herself. Um, when you split up with her, I believe you left her a parting gift. Um, yes, I did. I did. <laughs> what did you leave her? Um, some sample of urine in her case. <laughs> you weed in her suitcase. I weed in her case on all her lovely now, evening dresses. Okay, well now this is. I, it's not the, I believe, not the accepted way of terminating a relationship between <laughs> agent and artist. But I'm sure the message was passed over. I think so. Did yes. you ever hear back from Lindsay? No. 
No, and I don't know why. I do not know why. I I can't... It's a strange thing to picture you... (laughs) Squatting in somebody's suitcase. Yeah, and leaving the message. You must have been kind of angry at the time. I was actually... I'd had a couple of drinks and she didn't like people... (laughs) She didn't like people drinking and I came into the room and I was being very noisy and there she was lying in bed, you know, with the old eye mask on and she's like, be quiet, I want to sleep. You're disturbing me. I'm like, oh, shut up, you old bat. (laughs) And you left a present. Yeah. Well, that's one way of ending things. That's You know, it certainly gets the point across. It does. Um, You calmed down a lot since then, I guess, haven't you? I mean, you still speak your mind. I'm not saying you've changed in that way, but I mean, yeah, I get but the I mean, that, listen, yeah. you can't have a 52 year old woman squatting in someone's case. It just doesn't work I don't when know, you're I think 20. They were, they were internet's nice, okay, <laughs> that kind of thing, I believe. But, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a young person's way of expressing. It me. is. It is. It, it wouldn't work uh, for me now. Okay. Um, the X Factor is still rocking and rolling on ITV. It's on tonight. How many more weeks are there? Um, I think the last show is December 11th. Right, and you don't final. know whether you'll still be in at that stage. No, I, I could be out in two weeks. Because I had the feeling when it started, I thought it was pre-recorded. I thought it was a fade of company. I didn't realise that it was going to go into the live thing. Yeah. That's me being dense. So it must be quite tense when you're sitting in the studio there. It's really, really tense and you get really involved. And it's like I was trying to tell Ozzy about it when I first started to do it. He was in America and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. But last week he was on the edge of the sofa watching yeah. from home yeah. and he's dialing the numbers yeah. and it just draws you in, you know. It you does, get it, really it involved. Really does. Well, it, you, there's something about the way talent, because essentially it's a talent show and the way talent shows are done now is the fact that you get to know the individuals over weeks. That's the clever new development yeah. in recent years. That's what really hooks people in, of course. Yeah. Um, um, let's talk about the earlier uh, stages on the uh, competition itself. The auditions, which we all love. I loved watching the auditions. And some of the people you had coming in were quite remarkable, of course. Quite bonkers. Uh, my f- personal favourite, and I'm going to ask you if you it, was the rapper who came in, who claimed he'd been compared to Eminem. Oh. And at the end, I obviously, I asked him afterwards if you do an angry rap. And he said, uh, the rap, as I remember it, went, Kelly Osbourne, uh, I got more t- that she's got more talent than a piece of dirt on my shoe. And you think, well, you just said she's talented and he went and louis walsh you westlife well they weren't bad <laughs> that was his ang- that was his party no, shot i mean just completely insane yeah. <laughs> and then there was another rapper that came in the one that i had the fight with the um Which redhead i don't know if i saw that bit. oh wicked i mean he was so bad he came in with like you know the attitude yeah yeah you know swaggering had, in yeah you know like and um, before he started, I said, you know, your your attitude is really offensive. You've got a very negative attitude. And he's like, hmm, you know, he's putting his shoulders up yeah. and down, shrugging, snarling. He was the worst. And he goes, I've sold 300 records. I said, yeah, but you must have bought them all. They must all be in your bloody house. It's like, you know, I'm a professional. But I suppose because I've, I've seen you on the show and I know that um, if someone comes in and they're genuinely hoping and trying their best. You're very nice to them. I've actually been very nice to people because people have come in sometimes when they've sung and they've been a bit lost. And they're, some people seem genuinely, I think, almost unwell, some of the people you've had in, or bless them. And, and often you've said, I think you need to find something else that you enjoy doing mm-hmm. with your life, which is such a nice way of putting the fact yeah. that this is not going to happen for you. It must be, I would have thought, quite hard, it, quite it's, difficult. It's very hard, and it was very hard for me when young kids came in because they've all got a dream. And, you know, that's what keeps us all going. I had one when I was younger. You did. We all did. And to have the balls in the first place to come in and sing with no music... And especially and, as it's you, they've seen you on TV. It's and, Simon Cowell, they've seen him on TV. It's Louis Walsh, they've seen him yeah. curb crawling probably. I mean, it <laughs> takes, it really it's does. A joke, <laughs> <laughs> but you take a lot to actually stand up there and do it. It yeah. really does. And we cameras there as well. Yeah, really? and I don't no, want to okay. burst anyone's bubble. I don't want to humiliate anyone. So, you know, there's a way of being constructive yeah. and, and letting people down nicely. But then you get the nutters, who I love the nutters. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we've had some fabulous nutters. I oh. mean, the twins, we've had two sets of twins that were spectacular. Yeah, there were the twins who came in who, I can't remember who said that they should be working in a, a, a strip or a lap dancing, but I think you said that, actually, they should go back to work as strippers. I said worse than that. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. And they, but you had a point, very much so. But then there were the um, the ones with the glasses that worked in the factory, and then there was the oh, ones you know that what? bollocked I, us. I found that too too much, that bit. That was the bit when I thought, oh, that really, that was really too sad, I thought. Because I really thought that they had they, they had no idea no, that nothing. they weren't 
great. No, they didn't. And then they did it, and they were completely uh, demolished when you guys said, no, no, you don't have it. I mean, they everyone seems to think that being twins is the greatest gimmick in the world, for a start, which is... I think it's thing. frightening. <laughs> they twins frighten me. You know they have a twin day. There's a twin day in America where there's a, a town you can go to where only twins turn up for the whole day. Well, it's frightening to we me. We should make a documentary, Sharon Osbourne, on twin day. <laughs> Terrified. Yeah, yeah. And then we could, we could do two versions of you. You could do you, and then we could pretend you had a twin. <laughs> And there could be an evil shower and walking around. <laughs> but you, but you One know who what? hated dogs. <laughs> Do you know what? It's like when you've got two twins and they're both bad. It's like Twice. one's bad enough, but yeah. you've got two two of them. But there must be, I mean, do you, it, it kind of is strange. Is there an aftercare provided by the show? Because when these people sort of head off afterwards, presumably some of them, it's, you know, there's emotional scarring taking place. Well, there was one guy that tried to drive his car through the window, the doors at Wembley. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. <laughs> he got his, and, but mind you, he had a Mercedes and he came up on the steps, drove right through. Oh, that's okay then. If you've yeah, got a Mercedes, it's, fine, he's it's doing a good well. German motor, yeah. come on in. Um, I love the guy who uh, I think everyone thought was, you know, a bit more flamboyant than he thought he was being and suggested that maybe he should come back and sing it in a dress. And he was furious and went off to phone his lawyer. Yes, he yeah. was fabulous. But then Didn't he, you love him? Then he offered to come back and sing it in a dress, didn't he? After saying, I've never been so insulted <laughs> all my life. Then he went, well, if I came back... No, no, dress. that was the guy from China who said, I'll do it in oh, a that's dress. Right. Oh, bless yeah, him. I know. It is, there is a real power that you guys have out there, though, of course, when people are that desperate and that, that needy and that, you know, filled with hope. That's what it is. I mean, look... It's especially these days. I mean, people see what you get with celebrity and everybody wants a bit, and I don't blame them. Mm. You know, uh, you know, I don't yeah, blame them at all. It, it, but it, do you think it's worrying that people kind of want what celebrity give them without necessarily putting the work in, without necessarily even having the talent in some cases? They... Well, that's the thing, and that's where it's because everybody gets involved in these people's lives it's it's really about talent and as much as you can like somebody and think they're cute or they've got a, a sad story and you want to help them i think it's about time that somebody from one of these talent shows one that had real talent and could maybe make it worldwide well, nobody the, nobody's ever mean, sold yeah. a bloody record outside of this country yeah. they sell one i think will young's the only will one young's that's doing pretty well yeah. there you know and i think and most of them do have some talent i mean gareth gage is a talented young yeah. fellow you know you can see that they've got yeah. talent but then maybe maybe in a way though there's a stigma attached to being a winner from a talent competition of course there is. There's a lot of stigma. And the one thing that we were all saying about Roberta was the best thing that could have happened for her, for her career, is, is that she was the first one named because off. The, because in the last, I think the last pop idol or something like that, there was a young singer, this young black girl, who was, had a fantastic voice, and she got voted off really early. And I was amazed, and I'm assuming that we'll see her again one day. I think she'll bounce yeah. back and come back on top. Yeah. Um, who, who do you really think is going to win? Who do you think, I mean, I know it's up to the public ultimately, but who do you think's really got the legs? You see in different genres. Mm. You know, I can see Rowetta going on and doing... She's great on TV. She'd be great in cabaret. You know, she'd... Hey, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> She's just a character. She yeah. could go on to do great. And, and obviously, I think Tabby... Tabby, yeah, he does. He's come. great. But it's I don't want him to win. Because he's slightly rock and roll yeah, if he wins, that he's kind of kills He loses cred. It, I don't want him to win. Yeah. You know, I want him to get the exposure and then, you know, we'll go off and do whatever. And will you continue looking after him afterwards? Oh, yeah, the same with Cassie, too. And I think Cassie has got such a brilliant voice. She's so young. She'd be brilliant in theatre. Yeah. You know, she, she'd be like the new Elaine Page. Already then, all the people who are through to these funnels, they've all kind of, like, benefited in some way because they've all had exposure. They'll all yeah, get worse exactly. as a result of it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, what about you guys in terms of you, Louis and Simon? Oh, it seems to have calmed down a bit now, you were saying. It was getting... I watched it last week and there was... At times it was quite uncomfortable because it was genuinely getting... You were really having a go at each other. It really, really got my goat when, when you turn around to somebody and they're up there and you say, you look like you should work in a hotel. Well, that's not constructive. Now, how do you think about the way she sang? Yeah. How did you think about her performance? You should... You look like you work in a hotel. Oh, Really? Well, Michelle Pfeiffer used to work in a bleeding grocery store, yeah. checking out. Yeah, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? You know, we all start somewhere. But I think, yeah, I mean... It's it was... not constructive, and when it's not constructive, I get so mad. Because the thing is, if I was to turn around and say, well, Verity, uh, what's for dinner tonight? Mm. 
that's not exactly you're basically having a dig and trying to score a point on exactly. a, a almost I'm childish gonna, level. Yeah, it is. I'm not going to do that. Although having said that, I do. I think Simon Cowell is great. I think he's a brilliant screen presence. I think he's a terrific on the show. And more often than not, his assessment of someone's talent, I find myself agreeing with. He is a great entrepreneur. He's Barnum and Bailey. He really is. I mean, I have to take my hat off to him. Is that him. why his trousers are so high? He's got another person in there. <laughs> <laughs> or he's trying to hide his colostomy his, bag. His Barnum and Bailey he's trying to get into an adult movie when he's underage. <laughs> he's not wearing a bag, is he? No. Not that there would be anything wrong if he were. No, I mean... It's waiting for all of us. Yes, it is. It's um, just around the corner. Simon is great and I admire him. I really do. I mean, you can't not look at what he's done. Oh, I've just remembered something that happened in one of the early episodes. When Louis Walsh, that was a really weird episode, when some woman turned up who he vaguely knew from Ireland. Oh, my God. And Simon kind of bullied him, saying he'd go on a date with her. Yeah. And then she came back the next night, and he didn't go on a date with her. No. He was hiding in my dressing room. But wasn't that just terribly, terribly wrong of him, don't you think? Shouldn't he um, have just gone for a coffee or a light lunch? Because my little boy was watching that. Harvey was watching it with me. He's ten, and afterwards, he was furious on behalf of that woman. He was really angry, and he was like saying, "And he's saying, if I get the chance to meet Lou Walsh, I'm going to tell him he should have seen that lady, and that was really bad of him. And why didn't he see the lady?" And he got really cross about it. And I can understand why. I did show him in a particularly bad light. I felt. Um, I, there was some sort of history between them, and I don't know what. But Louis knows her family too, her mum and dad. Yeah. So it's like. I'm not sure what went on, but was, all I know was, was he weird. was hiding in my bloody dressing room. Wasn't that weird? <laughs> it was very weird. And then ha putting it on the show. Saying, I know. Here's someone turning up, hoping for a day, and you just let her let sit there. Let her sit there, I know. That's sad. It wasn't it's nice. mean. Yeah. I don't like... Well, will you tell him from my little boy Harvey that he's a cad and a bounder <laughs> and a rotter and a, an absolute shower? <laughs> uh, we're going to play a track. We're chatting with Sharon Osborne. We'll chat a bit more after this. What are we going to play, Andy? A new single for a band called Stereogram. OK, let's have a listen. Um, we're talking to Sharon Osborne. We still have Mr Dizzy Rascal coming up in a minute, yeah. who I'm a big fan of. Are you familiar with Dizzy's work? Love Dizzy. Good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> who is he? Uh, <laughs> Dizzy and Osborne. <laughs> Dizzy and Ozzy would work together well, wouldn't they? Yeah. you got the Zs going on there. How is Ozzy, by the way? He's really good, and I want to thank you for something, because last Christmas... When you were doing one of your shows and you said what you wanted for Christmas was for Ozzy to get better, and I was sat there on the couch crying. Well, we I think everyone really took Ozzy to their heart over the last few years. You know, after for years where he was this kind of seen as this demonic, slightly mad figure, then we all got to know him via his anecdotes and stories when we heard him interviewed, and then, of course, the show on, on MTV that we had over in Channel 4. Everyone, I think, really became a fan of you and the family and, and Ozzy in particular, and so when he was hurt in that way, it just seemed awful. Well, and it was a it was you. a quad bike accident, wasn't it? Yeah. And What's it... he doing on a bloody quad bike at his age anyway? Sarah? Tell me about it. Bloody <laughs> hell, he probably had leather trousers on as well. <laughs> my first reaction was, oh no, my first reaction was, the second one was, oh you bloody idiot. I What's know. he thinking? I know. We all know those bikes aren't safe. Don't go on them. I wouldn't mind one though. <laughs> I mean, the problem is they are really good fun, aren't they? They are good fun, but I tell you, when, when one that weighs 600 pounds bounces off your back, it's not fun. Oosh, you don't want that. And it's really, I mean, he's lucky to have basically bounced back from it. Yeah, very, very lucky. Uh, now, presumably, the bike has been sold or given away? We, we're thinking of what to do with it. We thought, well, we're going to sell, because we all had one, and so we were thinking of selling them on eBay and then giving the money to charity. Yeah. But the worry there, of course, is then if someone somebody else, else is going to yeah, get... Yeah, yeah, you don't want to do that. So I was thinking of buying someone a scooter for a person years ago, and I thought, well, if they have an accident on the scooter, you'd feel so yes. responsible and involved. Yeah. Um, but he's well. He's back to, well, what we consider as back to as normal as Ozzy ever gets. <laughs> <laughs> he's fabulous. I love the fact that he loves the History Channel. You, oh, yeah. addicted. Man, men of a certain age, that's all you want to do. I you know. want to watch the History Channel. I love a bit of Hitler in the afternoon. No, <laughs> let me tell you something. We've watched so many documentaries on Hitler. He had syphilis. He had a bad heart. We talking he about Ozzy or, or Hitler here? Oh, sure. behave. What are you talking about here? Uh, we know everything about him. It's like, bloody hell. You know more about him than you do your own family. I do. Yeah, it, it's a fascinating subject. <laughs> it is men of a certain age love a good history show um, so what time do you have to be uh, at the studio for tonight presumably it's it's fairly soon um, fairly soon yeah and what time do the kids get in and start rehearsing they have those kids there at 7.30 in the morning no way and they're kept there till 11 o'clock at night so it's a really long day it's, those kids work so 
hard. I can't imagine how nerve-wracking it must be for them, though, to, on a day like today, knowing it's going to be going out live on national television. You've got, what, seven, eight million people watching? But that's what I say, how, you know, you can't put any of these people down because they have got the guts to yeah. stand up there and perform. Well, that's right. Now, I mean, you do have somebody like Rowetta and Steve that have been doing it for years. He's the smiley guy, isn't he? He's the smart. He's like the professional contest winner because he yeah. went on TV and won something before. Right, right. So he's like a pro. But I mean, you know, the the younger kids who haven't done this before, you know, it's amazing. Yeah, uh, it really is quite something. And you, even if it's not to your taste, their music necessarily or the songs they're doing, you've got they, to admire them for that. Admire them yeah. for that and the genre that they're all in. They're all good. Yeah, yeah. They uh, are. Um, this is a kind of an not odd, but it's a, it's an unexpected turn your life's taken here. I would have thought to find yourself the centre of attention, to find yourself as a, a celebrity, to find yourself being on television like this. It was something that was never planned. It's a fluke, yeah. just a fluke. After the show, people, you know, asked me to do things, and I'm like. Oh, all right then. I mean, just a total. It's amazing. You never know what's going to happen you never in do. your life. And presumably, you can. This this will keep on rolling. You'll keep doing stuff like this for years to come. Oh, I don't know. Me old man will get a bit does crazy he, with me. Does he like having you at home, at home in the kitchen? Yeah, he yeah? does. That's and true. the kids. That's the kids like. don't like it. You know, it's like mum. A man come likes on. a woman at home. <laughs> I'm all for the working lady. Of course we are. We're not cavemen. No. Oh. But when a woman's got bare feet in the kitchen, the world feels right. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, in your kitchen, you can't go barefoot because of the amount of cat wee on the floor and dog. Oh, no, you can never. You, otherwise, you end up sliding and falling. And yeah. it's just There's a, a nightmare. Lot of, I did my I, obstacles. I, I felt Ozzy's pain in that episode when he came home and there was dog do everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just walking again, you lovely little baby, kitty, 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 in that slight, slightly annoying way you have. Which, you know, and let's face it, he's a saint for putting up with it all these years. I'm sure you've put up with a tiny bit back from Ozzy. A eh, little bit, a little bit. <laughs> What's that story? I don't know if it's true, where he came back years and years ago on the road, he was out wasted, and he turned back at the hotel, and he'd forgotten you were waiting back at the hotel. And he turned back with a, a lady fan. Yeah, he was. <laughs> uh, a groupie. We were in Japan. Yeah. And um, he went out after the show with the, with the crew and the band. And, you know, four o'clock in the morning, key in the door. He falls in the door, <laughs> you know, arm in arm with this girl who's all over him like a rash. Little Japanese girl. And I'm like, right, you are going to get it. <laughs> and right by the door was... A picture. So I just unhooked it and bashed him over the head with it. I, I kicked her in the old fanny. Like, see you. No, we should point out it's a Japanese word for thigh. Yes. yes, yes. And I'm like, see you, your old pan face. Get out. And so um, that went down like a nun's knickers. So what, had he just forgotten that you were there? Totally forgot God, that I was not, there. That's not a good thing to forget, is it? No, no it's not, when is you're it? you're sneaking back in with a, a fan. Mm. Maybe she'd just come back to hear some new music. <laughs> or to see his stamp collection, or to watch the History Channel. That's Maybe probably she what it was. was a she fan wanted of to see something about the Emperor. <laughs> um, we better get rid of you because we've got Dizzy Rascal in coming. I could sit and chat with you all day, given the choice. But uh, we have the wonderful Dizzy Rascal. And we, you know, we have to. It's really guests on the show. It's like having children. You have you to have give, to give the, everybody time. Yes. Otherwise, everyone, someone will feel special and the other ones will feel left out and you have to make sure that everyone realises they're of equal importance. You know what I'm talking about there. Um, it's lovely yes, but I don't agree. No, of course <laughs> not, and I would love to keep you here. But we've got Dizzy and we're going to get Dizzy in. Hey, good luck tonight. I know, I know you don't need it, but good luck with your kids tonight. Thank you on so the show. Much. Please give my best to your family. We love the Osborne show in my house, but uh, I am a fan of yours. I'm a fan of Ozzy's. I like Jack a lot and I think Kelly is tremendous. Thank you so much. It's me. Thank you. Okay, and we also like your dogs. Yeah, look, come on, how perfect. Dizzy Rascal coming up after this. We should do the rest of the show in rap in honour of Dizzy Rascal. Oh, well, we, you see, we, could try, we could try and do the Dorset rap. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's hard to rap. It's hard. It's tricky to rock yeah. a rhyme. To rock a rhyme that's right on time It's tricky. Tricky. It's tricky, tricky, tricky. I don't know if you know that. Is that, it? Is that That's is that a bit of the Beastie Boys there. It's old school I'm quoting at you. Dizzy appreciates that, don't you, Dizzy? Yeah, man, what's going on? My friend Dizzy Ruskell's in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. Dizzy has his new album out at the moment. It's called Showtime. We played a track off that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he's going to perform for us live as well, which is fantastic. You're in the middle of a tour at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, the Showtime tour, 2004. How many gigs are, how many dates are you doing? Um, I don't, I've got about five more left in the UK. I've done um, Glasgow... Northern Ireland, Manchester, Leeds, uh, Newcastle, so Brighton last night. I've been about, man. Covered the whole country. How, and how is the tour going? How are you being received? It's got a wicked. 
Really, really well because like most people, if they did see me, they saw me at raves and everything. So yeah. I was really underground. So now I'm getting more. You're, you're quite mentioning. Mentioning. Is it wicked or indeed wicked cool? Everything. Okay, everything. that's what because that's what the kids say now. Wicked cool. Wicked cool. Wicked cool means really good, doesn't it? I, think, I suppose so, yeah, man. What do you mean you're supposed to? Do you, well, you don't know, <laughs> I never no. heard that one yet, man. What do you mean you never heard that one? See, you know why? Because he's not down with the kids like I am. <laughs> oh, no, I'm behind, man. I'm a trendsetter, so... I'm yeah, you're, be, you're behind. You can, come, <laughs> you can learn from us, Dizzy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can learn the modern style. Where? Um, how long is you, it open, man. How long have you been doing this for now, then? Since I was about 13. But I started just DJing. I had some turntables. I used to try and mix drum and bass records in my bedroom. That's how I started. And then you start, what, you start toasting over the top and talking to the crowd as well? Not, not even um, I used to have MCs that used to MC on my set and every now and then I'd write a few little lyrics because I just want to MC then I started MCing full time like I just started leaving the DJ behind see this that. is a culture which I don't really understand on part of because I came up via kind of going to gigs where there's rock music played and okay. the whole dance music phenomenon my nephew is an MC at the moment he's called MC Shameless I don't know if you ever heard of him he's out and about and he's you know got quite a following he's quite popular and I, you know I, I didn't really even know what an MC does Master of ceremonies, so they say. But this, in this day and age, we just shout at you. We just shout at the crowd. So say we were we a gig now, and you were come on as an MC. Yeah. How would you begin? What do you say to the crowd? I just shout at you, and make you listen, and hopefully you cheer. So is that how on your on the first time, boy in a corner? Is that that track that went oi? Get fixed, look sharp, get lit. Yeah, it's like to get get your attention. Get me. So that and is that how you used to start a gig? Yeah, I'll just get the microphone and shout at you. I think I could do that. <laughs> Why don't we do a gig together, Diz? Uh, Any time, man. Let's do, I think it would be quite the good thing. I need yeah, a hat, What are you, you going to do? What are you I, gonna I'd play? be MC Wassy. <laughs> and I could be more refined. You could come out urban, streetwise, bling bling. Okay, all going on. All right. Okay, I'll come out with a smoking jacket. <laughs> you do a bit, and I go, I say. <laughs> I say, Dizzy, some of the girls this evening are looking absolutely <laughs> splendid. Let me go back to you for a little bit of... That would work, man. Yeah, you see? I think so. Why don't we get together? Let's, let's try and hatch this plan. <laughs> I'm on it, man. It's going to happen. Uh, who do you listen to? Who do you like listening to? Not necessarily in your own sphere, in your own kind of, like, okay. musical area. I, I like everything from grunge to drum and bass to hip-hop. I mean... So it's, but it's mainly kind of urban music, what they call uh, the, the kind of street music. I, you know what, yeah? I, I, I need to know what suburban music is because everyone keeps telling me about urban music. Yeah. I need to know what suburban music is. <laughs> suburban music is people like uh, Dido, I believe, isn't it? <laughs> OK. <laughs> it's, it's more tuneful. It's a little bit more restful. It's the stuff you get more of here on Radio 2. Do you ever listen to, uh, you know, ballad singers? Do you listen to old school stuff like that? Do you listen to Sinatra? I started to listen to a bit to uh, Marvin Gaye a bit more. Mm. It's like, I, like, I was like, I'm wary on that, you know what I mean? Yeah. My generation's a bit too far from that. But I started to try and listen to the older music because it's like structured differently. Yeah. Like real music. Yeah, well, it's got more what we would recognise as the kind of structure where it's like verse and chorus and that kind of stuff. Whereas what you do, I suppose, isn't driven by that, is it? Not always. Sometimes it could be just a verse, chorus, then a verse again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when you write, do you write? Do you actually physically write it down, or do you kind of just do it verbally first, and then when it works, keep it in your head and then hone it like that? Sometimes like, I could have, have a beat, and I'll try and like go along with it, and then I have to write it down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Or sometimes I could just write in silence. Do you? Who do you like? Uh, who does what you do? Then do you like? Do you, do you rate Eminem? Do you think Dr. Dre's good? Who are the good performers out there who do what we would consider rap? Jay Z. Two part is that Jay Z rule? Is that his name? No, that's Ja Rule, man. That's Ja Rule. <laughs> ja Rule. Is he not the same fella? I thought he was the same fella with a different name. Nah, Jay Z is the, the, he's the real McCoy. Okay. Jay Z, I don't even heard Jay Z. Do you like DMX? Yeah, man. Yeah, he, I like he DMX. Does his as well. See, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jay, you only know two and you've got I'll one. I'll tell you who I really like the Wu Tang Clan. Oh, okay. You like the Wu Tang Clan? Yeah, man. Yeah, okay. You know what you're talking about then. All right, well, we, now you're going to play. Do we need to do. Can we do some backbeats for you here or something? Do you want to say. <laughs> Hey, we need to get in the studio and put that down, man. Yeah. <laughs> I've got some uh, I've got some good uh, little rhythms for you here. MC Wassy. <laughs> I don't be giving them away free like okay. that, man. People... <laughs> this is valuable stuff, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we? Do you need us to help in any way or do you just go into it? Uh, if you if you want to help me, if you want to sing along, it's all good. Okay. Uh, what track are you going to do from the album? I'm going to do the track called Dream. Anyone who might recognise it from the old Captain Sensible... Uh, Happy Talk. Happy Talk, which was originally yeah. from South Pacific, of course. OK, this okay. is Dizzy Rascal. Uh, his track, Dream, from the album Showtime, which is out now. It's highly recommended by us. Uh, take it away. Thank you. Yo. Yeah. 
Yeah. Dizzy Ross, Jonathan Ross. It's not games. Yo. I used to dream about crazy little things like fame In the days, hanging outside the off license We used to run around the streets, reckless with no shame Mainly up to no good the whole world of nonsense And when the girls walked by, we would try to catch the eye And if they didn't show face, we would act immature I had the thing for South and Hackney girls since I was a kid Couple West girls on my radar, I was raw And I was dead sure that I knew it all Whole world against me attitude, I nearly blew it all I found it a real big struggle getting through it all I swear, I didn't want to listen cause I sure didn't care Not knowing for reality I'd have to prepare Cause money don't grow in no Being broke was looking less and less the lick Plus I was growing up, life was looking like a scare So what am I gonna do, man? Don't forget Showtime Tour We're grafting out here Jonathan Ross in the center I say <laughs> This rapping's rather good I used to love music, it was like my hidden hobby But I couldn't get on local radio back then So I went to North London, I tried to Tottenham to be precise And got some airtime on Heat FM, then it escalated I was getting ratings here and there and carried on until eventually I was everywhere, I started doing all the hotspots Ministry, Caesars, Palace P area, Time and MV I did the grim and the glam, I did the poor and the plush I didn't hang around, I wanted my money in a rush Mind frame in the studio at this stage No time to chat, I didn't want to engage I found myself a new Hustle, it was beautiful and none like the one before, a bit more suitable. The more challenging it got, the more I fought it. Made an album, over a hundred thousand people bought it. Thank you. I'm thinking of wintering in Gestar this year. <laughs> Would you care to come, Dizzy? I'm there, man. <laughs> you got to... If you don't... How you gonna have a dream come true? Yo, to all the young girls coaching in the stairs in the flats To the superstar sucklings, Beckham in the makings You can go far if you put your mind to it You're a star, don't wait to be told, just do it Try and keep schooling your plans, don't worry about your mans They'll be there in the end, if they're real, if they ain't They'll be making no effort to impress Cause you'll find the way you are, just do what you feel Young baby mothers, yo, I got your back as well Young baby fathers, hold it down for your girl I ain't trying to preach, but for what it's worth That kid's the next generation planet Earth Big shot to the world cause I've been all around And when I'm gone I'm always thinking about my hometown I'm from the LD and there's no forgetting that And the big UK I stay repping that What? I'm rather enjoying this <laughs> I wonder if we have a brandy or a cigar That we could uh, enjoy while Dizzy raps out for the rest of the show And you at home I want to join in the rapping With young Mr Rascal In your own time you love that. You tell me you don't love that. <laughs> that was great. That was fantastic. Peace, man. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, you know, I meant to say, last time I met you, I forgot you, there was one track on your first album, which I started of Jezebel. Okay. I just thought was fa uh, really sublime. I don't know. Have you heard that, Andy? Uh, no, I haven't. No. Jezebel from the first album, Boy in the Call, is fantastic. The new album, Showtime, is great as well. Dizzy's on tour. Uh, you can catch him around the country. Uh, he's got a few more dates left. I know he's doing Norwich uh, tonight. No, tomorrow night, I think, in Norwich. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, then Bristol Academy on the 2nd of November and the London Fawn on the 4th of November. And then, presumably, you'll be going elsewhere to promote this, will you? Yeah, I'm going to be going around Europe as well. Are you known in the state yet? Yeah, I've been there. I was there. My album came out there. It does it about fifty thousand. Boy in the corner. Did so that's pretty good. I would have thought for especially for a UK act to go out there. Yeah, man. Is there much? What's the scene like over here uh, in terms of the competitiveness? Are people kind of pleased for you? People who you started with and were double always there are kind of you know. Is, is it tricky? I mean, it, it's this and that, man. It's fickle. Yeah. Which is the last track on my album, Showtime. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's got the promotional thing yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, you would have thought he'd been around for 30 years. <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of the time I interviewed Kirk Douglas, who managed to get the name of his autobiography into every sentence. Even if you said to him, what's, what's, what do you make of the weather over here? go, well, in my book, <laughs> the right man's son, I talked about the weather. Every time he had the opportunity to mention something, you did it. You've been, you've been briefed on this, haven't you? It's, the Amer it's America, man. Yeah. Um, you must be, uh, things are going well for you, though, Dizzy, aren't they? Yeah, man, I'm like I'm trying, I'm trying. Are you with it? Are you in a relationship? Do you have a partner at the moment? I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm a bat, man. I'm all over the place. Man. You're you're not settled down with anyone yet. Mm. You're not going to tell me this. <laughs> mm. Is there a young lady listening who you don't want to? You, mm. you, uh, you, <laughs> you want to send out a special big love to someone? Hmm. <laughs> God blimey, young boys today, eh? Uh, Dizzy, lovely seeing you again. Thank you so much for you coming. You too, man. In. Thanks, Ta Take care of yourself, and uh, I'll try and get to see you at the forum. All right, then. And I'll get my uh, dinner jacket out of the cleaners for the occasion. <laughs>
Imagine you do that, man. Stage. I should go on stage with a monocle and a cigar holder. I tell you, it would bring the, and the, I'm sure by the end he needs a boost. <laughs> You know, Let's you know, face I'm it, it's only talking, really, isn't I'm, it? I'm going to hold you to it, you know. I'll come out. We'll work on something, though. We need to, we need to get it down pat. I expect to see yeah. Jonathan Ross when you come down here, though. On the it's going to be the beginning of a whole new showbiz <laughs> chapter, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, of course, rap for me is fairly impossible to say, so we'll have to think up a new way of describing it. Uh, Dizzy, have a great weekend. Good luck tomorrow night at the gig. Thank you, man. See you next week. Peace.